So here's the question. Uh, why, why have a fast and slow scan? Two reasons. First of all, the fast scan, uh, I'm going to go to fast scan here. Notice, if you will, that the quality of the fast scan is not as good as a slow scan. And here's why. The way we make a picture with the microscope, if you recall, is that the electrons are hitting the specimen and causing the specimen to actually give off its own electrons, which are picked up by the detector. The longer the electron beam is on any particular point, the more electrons we get out of it and the more information we get. Of course, there's a downside to that. You can actually over uh, charge something with the electron beam, but, but that's the reason. So on a fast scan, uh, which is, as it says, fast, uh, the quality is grainy, and this is called noise. Slow scan, much higher quality. The other reason is this. I'm going to reach over to the scope here and physically move the knob. So I'm going to let that line come back to the top. So on slow scan, I'm going to start moving that knob, and you'll see that it's it's a mess. It's really hard to tell where you are because this part of the picture up here isn't going to refresh until the line goes back through. So the refresh rate is really, really slow. If I go to fast scan, I'm going to just go back, and you can see that since it's refreshing faster, that allows me to actually uh, to see what's going on. So when you're when you're moving the specimen around, you want to go to fast scan. When you're really trying to see the quality, you want to go to slow scan. All right, so what about reduce? Reduce is another way that a lot of people focus electron microscopes, and I just don't I just don't really use it, but most people do. And what's happening, if you look at this right here, I'm going to move it so you can see what's going on. The, the refresh rate is extremely fast, which means that when you when you make changes, uh, they're very obvious. Uh, and you're welcome to do that. It's a perfectly legitimate way to actually uh, to do the scope. To get off of that, you simply go again. You're going to go back to either fast or slow scan. And you're going to get the picture that you actually want. That line right there is, is basically an anomaly where the scope simply did not record a line, but doesn't make any difference. It, it'll refresh itself. There, it just went away. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and say we, we like this picture and we want to take it. Take a picture by clicking the Save button. I'm going to save here. It's going to capture our image line by line. In fact, it's, if you'll notice, it's even scanning even slower than our normal slow scan rate because you want the most information you can get out of the image. And that looks, that looks pretty nice. All right, so our image has been saved. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. So it's going to pop. And just this is normal. Now, we always want to save our images on the S drive, the SEM drive. So I'm going to use the drawdown here. I'm going to go to the S drive. Uh, it's under my computer, the SEM on application server S. And if you have a folder here, then great. If you don't have one, go up and create a new folder. Again, this a little bit older version it may look a little bit different to what you're used to using. Call it test pictures click off of it. I'm going to open that folder and we're just going to dump the thing right in there, uh, the image right into that folder. Now, here's the thing. Notice if you will, it's already got our name in there. We put star sand down there. It's got star sand. 001, that's our first image. Notice it also includes the magnification, which is really nice. There's three ways to save image. One is a bitmap, one is a JPEG, one is a TIFF, a tagged, information, uh, tagged image file format. You want TIFF. TIFF is the, it's a higher quality picture and then you can reduce that down in, in, uh, in uh, Photoshop later. So I'm going to pick uh, TIFF here. I'm going to save the picture. And that's really all there is to it. Okay, now you'll notice we actually don't have a live picture anymore. So how do you make the picture live? I'm going to make the picture live by clicking either fast, slow, or reduce. But before I do that, I want to show you the cool thing that this scope does. You can make direct measurements on the pictures. So I'm going to go under Edit, and I'm going to go into the uh, Data Entry Measurement. And what I do, it's going to pop up a screen that looks like this. It's the same picture. All right, I'm going to click Shadow because that adds a shadow to the to the look. You notice I can put in text, I can put in lines, I can put in arrows. For instance, say I could I could come like this and say I'll put an arrow in here like that and it says uh, that this is put in some text and say this is broken. B R O K E N. Return and it tells me that that's broken. But the cool thing is I can also make measurements. So this, this says L, which is a length. This is going to measure from inside to inside. I can do L, which measures outside to outside. So let's say I want to measure how far it is across this, uh, this uh, foramen foraminiferin. Click on this. I'm going to hold here. I'm going to drag all the way across. And when I do, it's going to tell me that's 1.22 millimeters, which is pretty cool. Also, I have a little mini Photoshop here. Uh, I can actually come in and I can, I can monkey more with the contrast and brightness here to get the picture I want. Or I can go to Auto Brightness and Contrast, and I'm going to say OK, uh, and then I'm going to save that. Now, this is the cool thing. It's going to pull up a save menu again. This time, notice it's, it's augmented this, so you don't have to worry about writing over your original image. So uh, I'm going to have 
the image without the tag on it image with the tag on it close this now you can only do this immediately after you take a picture because as soon as I come up here and hit fast again um, that picture that that option of measurement is gone all right so uh, so then we to magnify you just keep clicking let's say you want to make 5,000 what the heck everybody likes to go up so I'm gonna go to 5,000 I'm gonna go uh, in this case to uh, I'm gonna start changing the made the uh, focus on that's on fast scan I'm getting a pretty good picture go to slow scan here uh, it's always a good idea to let it scan all the way across one time before you do anything else uh, so you have something to, to compare it to and I'm gonna start moving and see if I can get anything a little bit better nope I think I made it a little bit worse so that's about as good as we're gonna get there and then if I want to save that picture I just I click save I've gone back to 500x here so let me show you one more thing which is kinda of cool and that is um, let's say that uh, you don't like the orientation of this picture down here you can you can click and, and turn it by 90 degrees we're just we're just changing the path of the electrons in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out some let's zoom out so you can actually see what's going on maybe to 100 again so let's say that that picture the composition I don't like too much I'm gonna rise, run the brightness up a little bit again I think it's pretty with the brightness up all right, so let's say I want to turn the picture. So I just I just click here, and it turns the picture by 90 degrees. I go to fast scan so you can see it, and I can continue to uh, to turn that picture by 90 degrees, I'm just rotating it. Isn't that cool? Okay. And also let's say that let's say that in this picture I want that particular thing right there sticking straight up. So I can I can flip the image upside down. I can click on the little minus here, hold that down. Oops, the wrong direction. I'm gonna hold that down the plus. And when I do, the picture starts turning. I can start ticking single ticks if I want until I can get exactly the orientation that I want, which is which is pretty cool. All right, so I've come back to 500x here. Uh, so let's talk about the procedure for actually stopping this. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to hit the stop button. Uh, and when you do that, you'll get a blank screen. So we've actually turned off the electron beam. So what happens if you forget to hit the stop button? Well, it won't let you make a mistake. So I'm going to turn it back on. It'll, it'll autofocus and then... Uh, So what if I come in here and just close the program? Say, oh, I'm done. I forget the electron beam and I hit stop. All right, it says, electron beam is on. Do you want to shut down the application? So in other words, this scope is not going to let you actually do something that's going to hurt hurt the scope. Uh, the only way you can hurt the scope is if you if you touch that detector or bang the specimen into the side of the scope. So so that's a pretty good safeguard. I'm going to put cancel here. Then I'll hit stop. Um, and once you, once you get a black screen there, then of course you're, you're ready to, uh, to take your specimen out. Okay, that's it for the, uh, for the TM-1000.